Hello everybody, welcome back a Couch of Science, uh, welcome this uh, very warm day. Thank you everybody to be here with us and uh, today we are going to have a very special episode. We are going to discuss about uh, uh, cellular biology and uh, cellular agriculture and it's something that is very interesting and we are very happy to have this uh, topic here. And as always, if you want to uh, share with us uh, your thoughts, uh, your questions, uh, just to use the comment section on YouTube, on Facebook, depends where actually you are following us. And uh, my name is Michele, I will be your host also for today. And uh, to help me today, there we, we have a new entry in the, the Couch of Science team, which is uh, Marion. Hi, Marion. Hello, Michele. Hello, everyone. How are you? Yeah, really good. Exciting to uh, talk about this topic today. Good, good, good. And actually, you uh, brought with, uh, with you uh, something very interesting. You brought us uh, a very nice uh, pill or sip of science, as we like to, to call it, uh, about uh, just a brief introduction. And uh, is the idea is to try to reply to a very, very uh, nice question that uh, we put it also in our... Um, Instagram and Facebook, we received a couple of uh, weird uh, uh, reply about that because mm -hmm. in theory it's a very interesting topic. But the question is, uh, and how much uh, did the most expensive burger cost? Mm -hmm. And it might be a very stupid question, but actually it's not that stupid. Uh, right, Marion? Yeah, you will discover it in a few minutes. <laughs> um, so... Because actually, uh, new technology uh, really brought the burger to uh, a new era. Uh, you can find so many kind of it nowadays. And one of them was at the center of one of the most uh, surreal and expensive testing ever. So can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah. So this burger on the picture was the star of the live testing um, back then in 2013 in London. Um, there were 200 international journalists that came uh, to admire it. And For a burger? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it's on, probably a very special burger. I yeah, imagine. absolutely. You will see. Uh, and actually, only two persons uh, had the privilege to test it. So, any. Ah, okay. So, it? somebody actually eat it. Mm hmm. Just two. Oh, okay. Just, Just two. Person. Okay. 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 <laughs> That's cool. So, any guess about how much did this burger cost, Michele? Uh, I I don't know. I I I I have the impression that the cost is it's a lot <laughs> because <laughs> two hundred journalists just for a burger uh, it's it's quite a lot of uh, a lot of people so a lot of media. Mm -hmm. So. If you go to the next slide, you will discover how much it was. <laughs> so this burger was uh, was made for the cost of two hundred fifty thousand euros. Oh my god! <laughs> also, I guess right now you're wondering why, because it kind of looked like a a red burger, and oh, it can be so expensive. Yeah. So like, yeah. yeah. But actually, it's not just like a regular burger. If you go to the next slide, you can see that this burger is the first cultivated meat burger in the world. So that means oh, that okay. this burger is a cowless lab crafted burger. No animal has been pasture or um, harmed to make this burger, which is actually a huge feat uh, in the field. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And so this burger um, it has been created um, by Mark Post and his team uh, based on the work of uh, Willem van Ellen. Uh, so at that time, um, the burger was not perfect, but um, to everyone's surprise that tested it, it tasted like a burger. Ah, okay. So the taste was, uh, was that. So the taste was already there on the, the first shot that the taste was there. Mm -hmm. Which well, is not... It's it was very missing. So it was some fat missing, the, the taster said, mm. but it was tasting like a burger. Okay. So, okay. so at that time, um, it was such expensive because it was 
uh, new science and the production was very um, at a small scale. But since then, um, the price has dramatically uh, fallen. Uh, if you go to the next slide, we can see that uh, today a cultivated burger cost is estimated because it's still quite to be uh, difficult to estimate it, but it's estimated to be around uh, 14 euros to produce it. Okay. So it's very much cheaper now and it could actually become even cheaper in the next year uh, than a traditional burger. So we never have been uh, so close uh, to turn into reality was churches already envisioned almost 19 years ago because he said as you can see uh, on the screen um, that we shall escape the absurdity of growing a whole chicken in order to eat the breasts of wing by growing this part separately under a suitable medium so it was kind of a visioner already. Yeah, it was a wise man, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so now you know the price uh, of the most expensive burger, uh, which is actually became uh, one of the iconic food of uh, cellular agriculture, what yeah. uh, we're going to discuss today. Yeah, okay, okay. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Marion. That was very interesting. So in the end, we started uh, with a very expensive burger for 250k. And now we are around 14 uh, euros. But actually, we are going to discuss with this with our guest. And uh, she is from France. It's the first time that we have a guest that is from uh, outside Belgium. So we are more than welcome to, to, to have her. Uh, she, her name is uh, Nathalie Roland. She is the co-founder and president of Agriculture Cellulaire France. And uh, she's a specialist in cellular agriculture. Hello, Nathalie. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Welcome, welcome. And uh, actually, uh, one of the names that was in your presentation, Marion, was uh, Dr. Uh, Mark Post, which was mm -hmm. the, the first uh, the scientist that put together this, uh, this uh, first uh, very expensive burger. And uh, Natalie has the, um, the possibility to work with him. So we are going to have very uh, good uh, inside uh, uh, information regarding this uh, this uh, new uh, field of, of science and of agriculture, and uh, you are uh, Natalia are also an expert in uh, the the consumer acceptance of this uh, of this new product, and uh, but we are going through that uh, maybe a bit later during this uh, this event. And first of all, I just want to ask you how how are you, Natalia? How is going in France? All fine. Uh, yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm. I'm fine. It's quite hot today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed. Oh. Indeed. Also, here in Belgium, it's quite. Uh, it's quite warm. And thank you to be with us. And uh, I'm sure that you're going to share with us a lot of information, and then we will storm you with a lot of questions, <laughs> because it's a very, very interesting topic, I guess, and also for our audience. And um, so uh, I don't know if you want to introduce a bit more yourself, uh, if you think that I just uh, uh, spare something or uh, or uh, you want to go directly to, to your presentation so we can share some uh, nice information as you, pre as you prefer. Yeah, but I can say that uh, I started to work on this topic of uh, cereal agriculture um, in uh, 2017. Uh, with Max Post at the Maastricht University, and uh, we uh, worked together on a consumer acceptance study. And mm -hmm. uh, since then, I continued working on this topic. Um, so, with a, a, a non profit based in Berlin and a, a, a research center uh, in, in France. And I, so I uh, co founded the, the French organization uh, Agriculture Cellular France. Okay, okay, very nice. Very and also, nice. maybe I should add that I'm not a, a scientist. So I, I'm not working on the technical uh, scientific development of this product. So I, I yeah, I, I know like the basic uh, process <laughs> yeah, of, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. produce this, that, but uh, not uh, like the details. Okay, okay, okay. But uh, probably it's also very interesting what what you are uh, a specialist about. So about how customers uh, react and uh, behave when they see this kind of product, which is uh, very interesting. So it's also 
part of our society. So we like it a lot. Uh, so again, thank you to be here. And uh, if you want, we can go through your uh, the few slides that you, you bring with uh, to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, for this, I will just uh, um, stream your uh, uh, screen. I will just uh, ask you to to put your uh, presentation uh, on. I have my pre presentation okay. on. I hope that. Well, okay. Okay. Let uh, me know if you see the screen. We see actually the the, the screen regarding uh, uh, Streamyard, so the pl platform that we are using. So probably <laughs> you don't see my screen. No, we okay. see we see the the Streamyard uh, okay. panel. Okay. So I think uh, you can uh, try again. Yeah. yeah. No worries. Uh, in the meantime, guys, thank you for everybody, and especially thank you to uh, the rest of the Couch of Science team that is in the background. Uh, today we have uh, Anna, Mikael, uh, Matteo, and Renata that is helping also us uh, on, on the background. And I think now we have the presentation. Uh, here we go. Perfect. Yeah? Perfect. OK. Let, yeah. let yeah, me yeah, know yeah. if, uh, yeah, OK. That's perfect. <laughs> Okay, so um, yeah, maybe just to uh, before explaining what is what we call zero agriculture, uh, we should um, also explain why we need to diversify our protein sources, and uh, the reason is that uh, conventional animal farming uh, causes some uh, issues, so animal welfare issues, uh, in terms of uh, the environmental impact. It uh, represents a third of the global uh, freshwater consumption. It's 80% uh, of the agricultural land use, uh, more than 14% uh, percent of the world of waste gas emissions. It's also deforestation, uh, threat to biodiversity and, uh, and pollution. And also in terms of uh, public health, uh, uh, we have uh, the, the, the issue of the antibiotic uh, resistance and uh, the uh, zoonotic diseases. Um, and we know that uh, the consumption uh, of uh, meat is going to, to increase a lot in the coming years. So the idea is to uh, find uh, a way to uh, answer this demand without uh, doubling uh, the negative impact on the, the planet. Um, and this is uh, why uh, we have people working on the development of uh, alternatives. So alternatives to conventional uh, proteins. Um, we have uh, already uh, some interesting uh, options. So we have the plant-based uh, product, plant-based uh, meat. Uh, we uh, already have uh, some great product uh, already available um, on the market uh, with different types of products. So it could be meat, it could be uh, milk, egg, uh, frames, uh, cheese, uh, a, lot of, a lot of things. Uh, and we, I think that we are still in the, the beginning of the development of this new like uh, generation of uh, plant-based pr product, a product that uh, aim to um, tra target uh, meat eaters, so flexitarian, not uh, only uh, vegetarians or, or vegans. So I think this is um, uh, a good solution, uh, but uh, for now, um, a lot of the consumers, they tend to say that uh, these products are not close enough to the conventional animal product. This is what we, 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 we saw in the studies, but I also think that the, in the consumer acceptance study, uh, studies made on plant-based products, they don't really uh, work on this new innovative plant-based product. So uh, I think they, yeah, uh, it would be interesting to know what the people think of this new type of product. Um, we also have uh, some people who are working on the uh, microprotein uh, fungi, uh, and uh, corn is uh, quite well known, uh, like the, the leader uh, on that. So another way to uh, uh, to, to to produce uh, a protein uh, not from animal. And uh, we also have some people working on uh, insect insect uh, pr proteins. So we have some. Uh, well, it's also the, the beginning of, the, uh, of it. So we have uh, a few companies working on uh, the development of uh, insect-based uh, meat. But I think most of um, the, the people working on insects are doing that uh, for the, the feed. Actually, it's, it's for, to, to feed animals. Uh, and uh, I don't think that we have a lot of uh, uh, startup working on uh, insect-based um, uh, meat. But it's also an, in development. So there are three like um, solutions, and uh, another solution uh, could be cereal agriculture. 
Um, so when we yeah, talk about terra agriculture, actually we uh, talk about uh, meat uh, and fish uh, produced from uh, cells, animal cells, and another type of, um, of a product, uh, ACR product, they are called like that uh, sometimes. So they, uh, the proce process, well, they have a different process. Um, the idea, uh, so uh, to produce cultured meat and uh, also uh, fish and uh, seafood, um, is to use uh, the tissue engineering uh, method, so a method coming from the medicine, uh, from a, a regenerative uh, medicine. Uh, so the idea is to take uh, cells, uh, stem cells, uh, to harvest uh, these cells uh, with a, a biopsy, or uh, work with immortalized uh, cell lines, um, to uh, put these cells in a bioreactor, so could be different types of uh, bioreactors. Um, some people are working on yeah, different types of uh, bioreactors, um, depending of, um, yeah, because we don't have like um, one process. Uh, at the moment, the uh, researchers, scientists, they uh, try to find the best way to produce this meat. So they are exploring different uh, options for that. So we, uh, so the basic idea is to put these cells uh, in a bioreactor, so a big machine uh, with like the, the perfect uh, conditions for the cells to uh, to grow, uh, to feed the cells with uh, nutrients, those so some basic nutrients like sugar, amino acids, lipids, things like that, um, and then we are supposed to, to obtain a muscle, a muscle tissue, and so meat. And we can also uh, assemble this muscle tissue with uh, fat tissue. Uh, it could be a way to produce this meat, but we can also co-culture different types of cells, uh, muscle cells, uh, fat cells, and connective tissue cells. And um, some scientists are already working on uh, this uh, co-culture. Uh, and yeah, I, I think that uh, the idea here is to really uh, um, recreate uh, something very close to what is meat and something uh, yeah that will uh, be close for, for the for the consumers but yeah we are at the very beginning of uh, this science uh, we have a lot of things to uh, uh, to to do to have uh, to be able to have a, a very a meat that is very close to conventional uh, meat and maybe we should also say that uh, because we hear sometimes that we need um, fetal bovine serum to produce this meat it's because uh, it's the in the, the medical field um, this is a, a like a, um, an ingredient that uh, we uh, we use a lot. Uh, so for the 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 in the beginning of the research, a lot of the scientists working on the development of this meat they use uh, this same uh, product uh, because it is uh, found. We we don't have uh, another solution, so they start with that. But the idea is to find alternatives and not use this fetal bovine serum because this product is uh, very expensive. Uh, it's um, not uh, ethical, uh, so th that would make no sense for uh, the, the startups working on the production of culture meat to use this uh, fetal bovine serum. So no one is planning on uh, using this um, serum um, in their uh, end product. So this is the basic technique uh, to produce the meat. And uh, we also have uh, some uh, other products. So the, the idea is to pr produce uh, milk, egg, gelatin uh, proteins. And uh, there, the, the, the technique is a uh, recombinant DNA. Um, so we don't need uh, animals for that. Uh, we use uh, microorganisms, uh, we, uh, like uh, yeast and our bacteria. Uh, we uh, put, uh, we insert a gene in these microorganisms, and these microorganisms, they uh, read the genetic code and produce uh, the protein that uh, we need, so casein, ovalbumin, uh, depending on uh, what uh, we need. And uh, so this is a technique that has been used for uh, already um, a, a long time. Uh, the first uh, genetically engineered product um, was for food was uh, Rinet, so something that we uh, need uh, to produce uh, cheese. So it was in 1980. And uh, since then, we uh, are producing a lot of uh, protein this way and uh, a lot um, of enzymes. Uh, like, uh, so we have some uh, examples here. Uh, so this is the, um, the technique and uh, no, uh, so some like pictures of like prototypes of the product or so the products uh, under development. So also I should say that no product is um, on the market yet, is available on the market. Uh, so all of the products are still under development. Uh, 
Uh, but we can see uh, some pictures of uh, meat, fish, and uh, seafood uh, products. Um, so as you can see, there are people working on different types of, um, of meat, uh, on beef, pork, chicken, uh, duck. Um, also some, uh, some startups working on fish, on uh, shrimp. And uh, also the ACRR product. Uh, so we have uh, startups working on the, the production of uh, dairy proteins, like Perfect Day. Uh, they are, for example, they uh, uh, are producing ice cream uh, made with uh, these um, proteins. Our new culture, uh, they uh, made like a mozzarella prototype. And uh, also Clara Food, for example, is working on uh, the production of uh, egg white uh, protein. But uh, with the, this technique, uh, we are also able to produce non-food um, product uh, ma material like um, laser uh, and uh, silk proteins. Uh, as you, know, you can see here, some uh, pictures of uh, the, um, the clothes that they, they made with this uh, protein. So uh, actually, with this technology, we, we uh, should be able to really produce a lot of uh, different type of product, products. Uh, so that's uh, this is quite uh, interesting, and uh, it really showed uh, the huge potential of the, um, this uh, technique. Um, so now, uh, to have an idea of the startups working on that uh, in in the world, uh, so we can see that now we have like almost uh, uh, 50 uh, companies working on the development of uh, cultured meat, and maybe something like 10 uh, startups working on uh, the uh, egg or milk, milk uh, proteins. Um, uh, in a, like a, something like two years ago, most of the startups uh, were like in the US uh, and uh, just uh, a few in, in Europe. And now we see that we have more and more startups uh, in Europe uh, and uh, in, in Asia. And uh, it's uh, growing fast. Um, so, so the, this product are uh, uh, developed to be uh, good, uh, to have uh, some interesting benefits. Uh, so the benefits on the environment, uh, the uh, environmental impact. So we um, we only have a, a few studies done on that uh, life cycle assessment. Uh, so a lot of uncertainties, uh, but uh, we can uh, say that uh, the results are very uh, promising, very in, very encouraging, uh, interesting, and positive. Uh, so this product should uh, require less uh, water, less uh, land. Um, should uh, release less uh, greenhouse gas um, emissions, uh, should cause less pollution uh, as well. And also something interesting about uh, the, the land use is that um, but that will mean uh, but no more deforestation, uh, conservation of natural habitats, um, and uh, protection of biodiversity uh, in, in general. So the, the land use uh, reduction sh should be uh, very huge and uh, very uh, interesting uh, for that. And also, uh, it will be also a way uh, to, uh, uh, to capture the, the CO2 as well. Um, that's also something interesting in terms of uh, for an animal welfare, because uh, that's um, obvious, because we don't need to kill uh, any animal for that. Uh, we, uh, for the ACLR product, we don't need the animals. And for the meat, we need animals, but uh, not, not a lot of, of them. And uh, this way, we should be able to, uh, to keep them uh, and to give them like, uh, just a, a good life, like a high uh, animal welfare standard. Um, so this product should be uh, of interest in terms of uh, health, uh, because uh, we should not have uh, the need of uh, like putting antibiotics uh, in the product. So it will be a way to fight against antibiotic uh, resistance. Also, the way that this product should be produced, uh, so they should be produced in a sterile, sterile environment. So this will mean the less risk of uh, bacteria. Uh, also, the reduced uh, number of uh, animals uh, would also mean uh, a reduced risk, risk of uh, zoonosis. And uh, the fact that the, this meat uh, should be uh, uh, tailor-made, uh, we should have a possibility to do a, a lot of interesting things, like, for example, uh, adjusting the fat uh, to a protein uh, ratio, also, uh, the possibility to uh, replace uh, saturated fatty, fatty acids uh, with omega-3 uh, fatty acids, for example, and add uh, some uh, uh, vitamins, uh, for example. And uh, the fish uh, produced this way uh, should not have any uh, heavy metals and should be uh, plastic-free. Uh, 
uh, so that's something uh, interesting. And uh, it's also something uh, interesting for the, the food industry because these proteins should have the same functional properties because today, but when the, um, uh, the the food producers they want to uh, change their formulation, they want to remove the animal-based uh, ingredients and uh, put instead uh, some, for example, plant-based uh, ingredients. The problem is that they don't have the same functional properties, uh, so they it's make it more difficult for them to uh, but to produce continue producing the same product uh, because they have to uh, change somehow the, the, the formulation. But, and with this new type of uh, protein, they should not have to do that because the functional properties should be the same. And um, for them, that would be also very interesting because they should uh, have, uh, for this product should have a better traceability and standardization, uh, better uh, consistency in the quality. This product uh, should be also uh, cheaper in the long run because we talk about uh, the price of the first uh, burger. Uh, and it was expensive because it was like a handmade uh, on a very low scale in the lab. So it's just uh, normal that uh, it was expensive. But in the long run, uh, this product should be uh, cheaper because uh, they should require less natural resources. And uh, so, so like uh, the, the the food producer uh, should not have uh, bah, financial losses uh, related to some losses and uh, also bah, thing like that. Uh, but we uh, still have uh, many challenges to overcome. Uh, so uh, a lot of them are technical because for the meat, uh, the idea is to adapt a medical technique to the to the food production. And sometimes we have a, a little research on some topics like. Uh, uh, for example, on a uh, research done uh, on a uh, fish, uh, fish uh, cell culture, we have to uh, work uh, to, uh, to with the immortalized cell lines to make them uh, more stable. Uh, we have to find alternative uh, to the fetal bovine serum for the dif different type of cells that uh, we are going to use. Uh, work on the optimization of the medium, so the medium uh, to, to feed the cells, uh, the, um, yeah, the, the product uh, to, that is feeding the, the cell, and to recycle this medium, meaning that. So we uh, have to adapt the bioreactor to, because we already have some bioreactors and big bioreactors, but they have to be adapted to the, this new uh, type of production. Um, we also have to uh, work on, uh, like, uh, find a way to make the uh, edible scaffold uh, to be able to have a uh, thicker, uh, thicker piece of uh, meat, like a 3D uh, meat, and not ju not just only um, minced meat, because in the beginning we should have uh, most of the product should be like minced, uh, minced meat, uh, because it is just easier to produce. And but the idea will be uh, to have a more complex product uh, in the future. So the development of more more com uh, complex uh, products, um, co-culture, uh, the the cells, so co-culture platform, vascularization, uh, and also so the um, the working on a larger scale uh, because the most advanced uh, companies this is where they are uh, today. They have to go for, from like being able to produce a prototype in, in a lab to be able to produce. Uh, to, yeah, uh, on a, like a pilot plant and a, on a larger scale, uh, larger scale production. So this is a big challenge, and also uh, the driving the the price down. Uh, it's also very uh, important. So many technical challenges, but there are also other types of uh, challenges like the consumer acceptance. And um, so we have um, some studies uh, done on this uh, topic of consumer acceptance uh, on uh, the, the meat. And in, in most of the studies, we uh, observe that uh, the acceptance uh, tends to be higher amongst uh, men, uh, also young people, educated people, uh, meat eaters, like uh, versus uh, like meat eaters and or vegetarians. And also people uh, who know, uh, uh, who are informed on this topic, what is uh, cultured meat. And uh, so one uh, of the, the issues that we have is that uh, the research is still uh, underfunded. We don't have uh, a lot of uh, academic public research done uh, on that uh, today. 
so this is an issue. And another one is the, uh, the regulations, uh, because these products, they have to be authorized uh, to have the marketing authorization. And that will take some time. And also, um, sometimes the regulations process is not well adapted to this new type of uh, product. So, yeah, they will have to, to work on that. And uh, people working on the regulation, I guess they will have to, to learn on, on, uh, on the topic to know better and have, uh, yeah, find a way to, to um, regulate this, this product, this new, uh, very new product. Um, now here a, a forecast uh, from a, a consulting company, Etikani. Uh, so it's just one uh, report, but I think it's interesting uh, to see that uh, they um, estimated that in uh, 2040, uh, culture meat uh, could represent 35% uh, of uh, the, the, the whole uh, meat uh, market. So this is, uh, okay, this is, <laughs> interesting, uh, encouraging. And they also think that uh, the plant-based uh, meat could uh, represent 25% uh, of the meat, and so 40% uh, of the meat uh, will be uh, conventional uh, meat. Um, and then to uh, some uh, information about the government's invo involvement and the public uh, research so in, uh, in Europe, um, because I think this is uh, an important topic and we don't talk a lot about it, and we should talk more about that, actually, uh, because the government development uh, will have, I think, an impact on the, by just the, the whole uh, um, development of the, this new field. Um, so we can um, say that uh, the, the Netherlands, they were like the, um, the very beginning of, of that. Uh, the first experiment uh, happened there, uh, they, and uh, were funded uh, in, in the Netherlands. And uh, at the, um, uh, just uh, la last year, at the, the, uh, the end of the year, uh, in the Netherlands, the House of uh, Representatives uh, requested the, their Minister of uh, Agriculture, Nature and Food Quality to show more ambition and uh, take control to stimulate the development of uh, cultured meat. So I think this is a very good uh, thing that happened in the Netherlands. But we can also uh, mention that uh, in, in Belgium, uh, so the, we had uh, Philippe Muiters, so the Flemish Minister for Innovation, uh, spokesperson, uh, who said that uh, culture meat has enormous uh, potential and we have to focus on production. And then uh, the Flemish government uh, gave a grant to a Belgian uh, consortium, um, which is to produce uh, foie gras. They gave uh, uh, 3.6 million uh, euros uh, to this consortium. So I think this is a very good example, and this is uh, just yeah a, a good thing to see uh, some governments already. Uh, but I guess they understand that uh, the importance of uh, this topic and that uh, yeah they should be uh, active. So we can also mention that uh, we have some um, uh, academic researchers working on the, the de development of this product uh, in, in Europe, like uh, in Germany. Uh, the University of Dusseldorf, they are working on the production of uh, cultured, meat, um, uh, cultured milk proteins. And also Fraunhofer, they are working on the, the production of, uh, of the fish. And some uh, European uh, programs are also uh, involved, uh, like for example, uh, EIT Food. They are funding uh, the Technical University of uh, Denmark, uh, a group of researchers working on the production of uh, milk proteins. And uh, also the Eurostar, they also gave a grant to a Dutch um, startup. So uh, there are uh, these are good examples, but we we need more. We that would be yeah because this uh, this uh, require a, a lot of uh, research. A lot we need a lot of people, a lot of scientists to work on that. So and it's also uh, expensive because it's it's a very like big deep uh, tech. So that would be good to have uh, bah, more uh, means from the government uh, and for them uh, to understand that if we want to uh, food independence, uh, bah, this um, cereal agriculture product will be, uh, um, uh, might be a good way to, um, bah, to, to be less uh, dependent on the conventional animal farming. And uh, also uh, the idea would be to be a leader and not let uh, other um, continents taking the lead, uh, like the US, because uh, but they are more advanced, and also uh, uh, countries uh, in uh, Asia, uh, they 
might be in a very good position in Asia because the, the government uh, seems to be uh, very interested in that. And uh, I think it's also like uh, the competitivity of the countries and Europe, uh, well, it's also important uh, in terms of competitivity to uh, get involved uh, with that. Uh, and I think that is uh, all uh, for now and I will be happy uh, to, uh, to answer our questions. Or maybe I could just say that uh, I co-founded uh, so the non-profit uh, Agriculture Syria France to uh, inform the people, uh, to help fund the research, uh, to yeah, do things like that. Uh, we know that uh, information on the, this topic is very important. And one thing is that but still most of the, the information available is in English. So that would be uh, great to have uh, more material, more information in uh, non-English uh, languages. And if you want to contact me, uh, you can send uh, an email to this address. Okay, thank you so much, Nathalie. That was very, very interesting. And uh, of course, I already see some uh, questions and we are going through very soon. If you have other question, guys, this is the moment to, to share with us in the comments. And I will start with a very easy question, uh, which is uh, uh, regarding uh, from YouTube, uh, Jay Spittles. I don't know if I'm cor pronouncing correctly. What is zoonosis? So this is a very uh, basic question regarding, you, you say that a lot of uh, different uh, pros uh, for this uh, kind of meat. And one is uh, zoonosis, which actually is a very heat topic, I would say in this moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, could you explain to us very quickly what what it is the zoonosis, but nothing uh, nothing too in detail, just uh, the concept uh, of this. Uh, yeah. So wh wow. why is something why is something that uh, we care so much about it, and uh, why it's so related to uh, farming? Yeah, but because it's diseases that could go from humans, uh, from actually animals to humans could be the other way around. But uh, in this case, it's uh, yeah, just diseases or virus uh, that could go from animals to humans, and uh, it could happen in um, in farms uh, because uh, the animals are uh, we have a lot of animals in one place and. Uh, yeah, it happened that one virus is coming uh, from the animals. Uh, this virus could um, like mutate uh, from an animal to another one, and when a human is uh, passing by, uh, but this, this virus can go uh, to the humans. So this is why uh, it's, we, we are here, uh, hearing, hearing uh, people talking more and more about uh, that and explaining like the link between uh, uh, animal farming and pandemics. Uh, because yeah, this uh, virus and disease can uh, come from uh, animal um, farms. Okay, yeah, exactly. This is a, that's a very good point. Actually, is one of the m most important reason why we should uh, focus more on these uh, uh, cultivated meat. Uh, this, uh, because it's a good alternative to avoid one of the biggest problem that we have now with this interconnected society that we have. Uh, thank you, Natalie. And then actually, uh, I saw a very the fir first question that we received uh, uh, was from Cedric, and uh, is uh, is very interesting. It's, it's a huge question actually. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> regarding insects uh, as protein alternative in Mexico, you can find the salty cricket as snack, warm salt, good before mezcal, tequila like beverage, and some <laughs> others. My question is. Is there any country that actually has a regulations for the quality of this kind of food? In Mexico, I don't think, I, I don't know if actually they have it. Uh, so the regulations in terms of insect or just... Uh... I think in terms of insect in this case, but also in general, um, if you yeah. want. But I, I, I don't have, a, like, I think a lot of information on the insect, but I, I think that in uh, a lot of countries, the people that are used to being eating insects, uh, we had to regulate uh, in the insect of consumption of insect, for example, in Europe, because this is it was not something that we were used to eat. Uh, but but in a lot of uh, countries, they have been eating uh, insects for uh, a long time. Uh, but the regulations, um, the regulation process uh, is different um, for each type of food. Fine, it depends of the. Of the food, for example, in Europe, we have uh, the Nouvelle Food Regulations, and this thing would apply to uh, cultured meat. But um, yeah, it just depends on like the type of um, 
of uh, alternative of proteins we are uh, talking about. If this is something that uh, we, uh, we've been uh, eating for a long time or if it is something new, and in each uh, country, we have uh, our continent, we have uh, different uh, regulations. So it uh, really depends on the country and the type of uh, uh, protein. Yeah, uh, yeah. But probably we can go through this uh, a bit later because I think also the the culture is uh, make a lot of difference in this kind of stuff. As you say, that usually for cultivated meat, it's more for young, uh, educated people. Probably also for insect is if you have it in your culture since uh, your grandma was a child. Probably it's much easier to think about a burger made of uh, insects. Uh, uh, but I think that fine, what. I know that is that uh, in the developed country, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> it's quite difficult. Uh, I guess for the people, uh, uh, like the we have some consumer acceptance issues, and in um, uh, the other countries that are used to uh, eat uh, insects, actually, uh, when the people they get uh, like richer, um, they don't want to eat insects anymore because insects are seen as like a uh, food for the poor. Ah, okay, poor okay. So actually, I, yeah, uh, it, they prefer ah. to stop eating insects when they have they are wealthy enough to be able to to buy something else than insects. Ah, okay. So there is actually this uh, this problem also in in a country where is a uh, is cultural upsetted. Let's say to eat uh, insect is still something that is considered a poor food. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, actually, yeah. It's, and, um, when actually it's not at all, but okay, it's, <laughs> it's just, it can be a bit weird, that's that's for sure, that's for sure. <laughs> and uh, I would actually uh, stay on this topic regarding also the, um, the impact, the ecological advantage of all these. And we have a question from Mikael, mm -hmm. which is asking, uh, what is the most impactful alternative uh, milk, butter, meat, in terms of environment impact compared to animal source ones. So which one is the most uh, uh, ethical for uh, in, from an ecological point of view of this? Uh, the production uh, of, the, between production of milk, of butter, of meat, uh, or eggs, uh, or all these alternatives? Because you say that there is not just an alternative regarding meat, but also... Okay. Uh, I'm talking, talking about uh, the, fine, the alternatives from the... Fine, I see, uh, yeah, yeah I see, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but we have uh, we have uh, still like uh, just a few studies done on that, and uh, only on meat. So uh, mm, okay. uh, that or um, yeah, we don't have uh, so much information on the uh, environmental impact of these proteins. They they should should be quite similar. Uh, but uh, yeah, at the moment that's still fun. We cannot be sure of anything because we don't have like uh, just one plant. Uh, we we, yeah, but the most advanced uh, company, companies they are uh, building their uh, pilot plants. Uh, but for now, we only have uh, some um, yeah assumptions, uh, and that's still quite complex to back, to um, really uh, do studies on that because also they have to decide what type um, of process they will by uh, use in the study, like uh, what type of um, of nutrients they uh, will give to the the cells and and we we are not sure far we don't have like a, a one um, one process in mind uh, we are exploring different uh, options so yeah that's still uh, difficult to really have a, a good idea a precise idea of uh, like the impact yeah I just know that I I, uh, I read I think like most of the the, the studies and uh, report are done on that and uh, yeah the, the results are, are positive but uh, we we need uh, more research done on this topic and we also need to have a better idea of the process and uh, what they will use what type of bioreactor what type of nutrients uh, yeah the, so mm -hmm. the, the impact on the environment environment will depend on on a lot of uh, things yeah there are a lot of factors that, that that's for sure and um what actually do you think because you were saying that not none of these products are on the market yet uh, do you have an idea or can we do a projection regarding the timeline of when we are going to have these uh, product on the market uh it's already in the market in some countries i don't know or no 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 nothing is uh, no on the market yet uh and i <laughs> And I, well, the people are very curious. They really would like to know, have an 
an idea in terms of uh, the timeline, when we should have like the, the first product on the market. But I think that's still difficult to evaluate because mm -hmm. this depends on the like the technical uh, advancement and also the regulations. Um, mm -hmm. I would say that that would take some more years uh, to see the first product and and the beginning that would be only a very uh, small um, scale uh, very small scale production uh, the, the the startup they plan to um, to to sell their product uh, in restaurants at first high uh, high end uh, restaurants uh, and uh, yeah and a small um, sm very small quantity in the beginning so oh, okay. that, that, but that's, I know that the people are always asking this question on like when we should have the, the product, but that's, uh, I think, quite difficult to really uh, mm -hmm. know. Oh, okay, okay. So actually, you mentioned the legislation is very important, and it seems that European countries are quite uh, interesting in this, and they want to push it this further. Uh, do you think that, uh, and it, I mean, maybe I, I, I mislead this, but do you think that a, European legislation uh, can push this uh, forward? Like, uh, you know, a common rule that is the same for all the countries of Europe. Uh, it's something that might help uh, to uh, push this forward and uh, have these, uh, these uh, products on the market soon? Uh, I'm not sure to understand what... As what's the question exactly? Like what? If, uh, if, the... if you think that uh, the if the European countries or the European uh, Commission or just the uh, as a, as a, as a group can push forward this if they pass a legislation that says that uh, everything is regulated, so everything mm -hmm. is more clear. Because you say that uh, also this is a very as a good impact as a huge impact on uh, on the way the moment that we are going to receive this. Uh, uh, this product on the market. So it also depends on, on that, on the legislation and uh, why this impact is so important because uh, for now there is no legislation, but... Mm. And uh, I think that having the product uh, regulated, authorized, uh, would be a, a good sign for the, the, the people because we uh, like uh, having the, the product uh, regulated means that they will have uh, to, to go through some tests and uh, that would be um, just something good for the people to, to know, to make sure that uh, the products are safe, uh, the test where uh, they passed the, the, the test, uh, they were successful with that. Uh, yeah, that will, I, I guess, help uh, with the, the, the um, that the, as have the people trust that uh, the products are just safe and okay, and the nutri their nutritional profile are, um, well, are good. Um, so yeah, but, the, um, I think that every action from government might help uh, the people un understand that uh, this, this is not just a business, uh, not just a new way to make money, but something good for the society uh, in general. And uh, yeah, I think that would uh, reassure the people. Um, and but but we know <laughs> we, we we need this product to be regulated, so they will have to, to go through this uh, regulation. Okay, okay, okay. But Marion, the I don't know. Could help, I guess that uh, the government could, could help uh, with the regulation to make, uh, but just work on it and uh, see how we could uh, regulate the product and uh, maybe adapt the, the regulation process uh, because, yeah, that would take some time uh, to find a, a way. For example, in the US, they uh, like created like a, a, a new uh, mm -hmm. regulation process just for this new product because mm -hmm. they had no nothing that uh, would fit uh, this new product so they like uh, build a new regulations uh, just for okay. this new product okay okay marion i don't know if you have any questions yes yeah, so I, mm -hmm. I was wondering then what is the main break uh, of entering the market for those uh, product coming from cellular agriculture is it more the technology, are there is some challenge or more the regulation? But I, th uh, I think that yeah. first it's the technology <laughs> mm -hmm. because uh, they, we need the, we need just to have, a, but just to go through the, the regulation, from what I understood, the uh, companies they have to give, give information on the process and have like a product that is like ready, uh, most ready to be commercialized. So they have to make some scientific uh, progress uh, before really starting with the regulations uh, process. So I think like 
the first thing is well, really like the technical challenge um, because we are yeah, still at the beginning of it. And, uh, and right now, only the most advanced companies are uh, trying to uh, produce on a, on a larger scale. And I guess they have a, a lot, uh, many challenges uh, to overcome, uh, like uh, the, the sales, the bio writers, the scaffold, the medium. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, let's talk actually about uh, uh, consumers because uh, something that is uh, really tricks me is understand uh, how uh, people can accept this uh, this type of, of product. In your experience, what is the most important thing for this kind of product that uh, the customers is looking for? Is the taste? Is the the safeness? Is the I don't know the price. What is the most important thing is for them, in your opinion, for us uh, actually? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 are you uh, just uh, talking about the study I've done? Because uh, I think like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the one I've done was maybe a little different from the other studies. Okay. Uh, because okay. Uh, I, actually, for we've done this study in uh, in the Netherlands uh, with Dutch people, and we had very positive results. Uh, ah, okay. And uh, what we observed is that uh, the people they already, uh, fine, so they had uh, a lot of information on uh, cultured meat. Uh, the majority of them they said that uh, they knew uh, what is cultured meat um, and. Uh, they apparently um, knew a lot on the benefit of uh, cultured meat uh, in terms of uh, social, the societal benefits, so the, the impact on the uh, animal welfare and the environment. So apparently, they yeah they, they knew that it was uh, that sh sh there should be something good for the animals and the environment. Uh, the the info type of information that uh, increased their acceptance the most uh, was the um, the information on the personal benefits. So how uh, that the meat is uh, produced, uh, the nutritional profile, the uh, safety of, uh, of uh, the product. Uh, this is what we observed. Yeah. So, uh, okay. I have I have two slides on on uh, this study. I don't know if you want me to. If, if you want to go through, yes. Why not? If you have something uh, that you want to share, uh, okay. <laughs> we have still a bit of time about that. Okay. Do, do you see uh, still see my my screen? Yes. 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 We okay. see it. So to explain about this particular study, so uh, like the title was the effect of information content on uh, acceptance of cultural meat in a in a testing context, and I think it's we it's still the only study with uh, a design uh, like this. So uh, we had almost uh, uh, two hundred uh, participants who came to the university. Uh, so Dutch people, um, uh, so the a representative of the D Dutch population uh, in terms of age and sex, and they came for a study on meat and uh, didn't know that it was a study on cultured meat. So they came, they answered the questionnaire, like, uh, have you heard of this meat before? Are you in favor of against the production of the meat? Are you willing to taste, buy, or price? And then we um, divided the group uh, into uh, three uh, subgroups. So I was uh, explaining. So one group received information on the uh, societal benefits of uh, this uh, meat, so animal welfare and uh, environmental impact. The second group, they received information on the personal benefits, so the production, uh, nutritional profile, uh, safety. And the third group, they uh, had no information on like the um, particular benefit of this meat. And then they had to uh, answer another questionnaire and. Uh, then we offered the people to taste two uh, samples of uh, meat, of burgers. Uh, one was labeled as um, conventional meat, and the other sample was la labeled as uh, cultured meat. Uh, but in fact, uh, both samples were conventional meat. So we lied. Uh, we had to <laughs> lie to the people. We wanted them yeah. to believe that uh, it was cultured meat. Uh, and then so ha they had a sensory evaluation questionnaire on, uh, so uh, like, uh, uh, the the appearance, color, smell, uh, thing like that, and uh, they uh, had a, a last uh, questionnaire. And so the main result is that uh, so they were offered to taste a uh, uh, sample labeled as cultured meat, and we observed that all of the participants um, tasted uh, ate the uh, the <laughs> the sample of meat uh, presented as cultured meat. So we were quite surprised uh, with that, like 100% uh, of them uh, eating uh, this burger. 
And so, I, uh, as I said, uh, the, the information on the personal benefit uh, increased the acceptance the most. And uh, the information on the societal benefit, they uh, seem to already uh, knew about that because we asked uh, open ended a question like, what do you think of uh, this meat? And also, uh, we observed that uh, the people, they preferred the taste of the cultured burger. Uh, and we have some also uh, other things like in terms of the demogra uh, demographic variation. Uh, so we observed that like in many, uh, most of the studies that uh, age was associated with a higher acceptance of uh, culture meat. Um, but uh, like also a uh, higher level of education and higher uh, frequency of meat consumption uh, were uh, significantly related with a uh, higher acceptance. But in our study, sex and uh, socioeconomic status, uh, they were not associated with a different uh, uh, acceptance uh, rate. And uh, guess that uh, something very important is that uh, previous uh, awareness of uh, cultural meat was the best and only, and only predictor of uh, its acceptance. So information uh, on the topic is very important. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. This is very interesting. and. Uh... It's not what I expected. I have to say, uh, it's uh, it's but nice. We were quite surprised uh, with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. I would, I, I was imagine that more, you know, people be more, you know, against it, or at least not very, very sure to do that, or very uh, easygoing. Uh, so it's 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 very interesting. It's very interesting. But, but in this part, this particular population, like a majority of them, they said that they knew well, what. This uh, cultural meat, and I think that uh, this should not be the case in other countries. So maybe, especially mm -hmm. in the Netherlands, and also because it was people from the region of uh, Limbourg, so well, where uh, the Maastricht University is, maybe they uh, tend to uh, to maybe learn more on the topic because they knew that uh, this thing was <coughs> coming from like uh, their face. Uh, this is okay. maybe why, uh, yeah, and also it's maybe something cultural maybe the dutch people are more open to this new innovative product than other people in from other uh, countries but um is there a plan or uh, ongoing uh, a test uh, with a bigger uh, sample pool of people like very big or maybe worldwide uh, or in different countries from what you know there is still other studies like this uh, I know that there are uh, researchers uh, working on that. So I don't know if we have like a project of a super big uh, study. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, it would be interesting to have like this, this uh, study made in other countries, but uh, yeah. it's quite a lot of work and you have to, uh, to ask the people to go uh, to the university. So it's uh, yeah more difficult. But um, there are other studies uh, done on that. But I think uh, we have a lot of surveys. Uh, and also, I'm um, I'm working on a, on a new study. It's a survey done on the, the French and the German markets. So not okay. the same study, but uh, it would be interesting to have information on these two markets because uh, still, but most of the studies are done on uh, American people uh, and uh, English um, speaking people. So we need more studies done on uh, non-American or English or uh, Dutch uh, people. People from different culture, basically. Yeah, different culture, different country, and yeah, and really observe if we would have like a very different results. Yeah, 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 yeah. indeed, indeed. Uh, Mariana, I don't know if you have any other questions. Well, just maybe then, because we saw with your study that people having more knowledge about cultivated meat were more willing to eat it. So, how do you plan to like raise awareness more broadly? Uh, <laughs> I guess that information education uh, mm -hmm. is important, and so I guess that uh, having this information available in non-English language mm -hmm. uh, would be also yeah quite important because uh, yeah because I think still of most majority of the information is in English, mm -hmm. but for that uh, but we will need people uh, to do it. Um, ah, just I have to return. Um, yeah, and I think uh, it's about uh, having uh, people uh, giving some time to, to work on that and also uh, explain uh, in a, like a, just like a simple way uh, what is it. Because so, so something about this topic is that it's a 
scientific, technologic topic, and so the people, they tend to think that it's just too complex for them, and they don't really try to understand what it is because they just think that it's just too complex. So I think mm. it's important to, bah, to make them understand that they don't ha they don't have like to know everything about that. It's the same for conventional meat. Huh? Conventional conventional meat today, industrial meat today is um, produced with a uh, lot of technology, a uh, not, lot of non-natural uh, uh, processes, and the people have no idea about that, and mm -hmm. they eat uh, the meat anyway. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. And also yeah. we observe that uh, it's good like to inform the people, but not give like too technical information. Uh, because like when, uh, in some studies, they uh, observe that uh, when uh, they uh, give uh, too, well, too much details about the technical uh, the process and te technical information, it tend to uh, decrease uh, the acceptance of the people. Ah, okay. That's very interesting. That's very interesting, actually. Which is, uh, it might be also counterintuitive, but uh, but it's very nice. And um, well, I think for, for the scientists and people who like science, uh, that's mm. <laughs> totally fine. They like to learn. Yeah, totally yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. No, no. But <laughs> I can imagine that can be scary that you are eating something that was inside a bioreactor. So what is a bioreactor? You know, maybe it reminds you something related to I don't know nuclear reactor. And so you know. Uh, uh, for people, it might be something that uh, is scary because just they don't know what it is, you know. Uh, yeah, but actually, they, they the cannot... people they don't know what they eat. <laughs> yeah, that's another uh, point. That's actually a very good point because uh, um, I don't know what you say that this kind of uh, uh, new in industry is very difficult to uh, have a regulation because uh, it's the first time that we have this kind of stuff. But what do you think? The regulation should be closer to the regulation that we have in. Uh, pharmacology world or should be more close to the regulation that we have in the food industry or should be but, something in the middle so how how we regulate something so complex uh, let's say in terms of legislation uh, but i think that what will apply in europe re we already know that uh, that should be the novel food regulation so it's a regulation mm. about food uh, i think that is yeah what will work the best but um yeah the only thing is that uh like as the the method is totally different uh from mm. like the conventional meat uh, conventional animal product but um yeah they that's uh yeah they, they are i think at the moment uh discussing i think about that uh, to, to find uh, a way uh, to adapt or uh, um yeah to, to find a way to for the, this product to be regulated but uh, i think that would be great Maybe if we can work with this regulation process that already exists, um, why not? I don't know if we that would be better to create something totally new. Um, I hope that we that would not take too long, because uh, just like the basic process, if I remember well, it's like um, 18 months uh, minimum. Uh, if everything is fine, no problems with anything. So if they have like to build <laughs> a new um, regulation process just for that, that will take uh, even like uh, more months or years. So yeah, that's uh, quite um, a complex um, topic. Okay, okay. So I, I, I will go on like for <laughs> another hour to discuss this topic because it's, a, it's very fascinating for me. Uh, but uh, I'm afraid that we have to stop because uh, it's, uh, it's been a while that we are here all together. Um, so, uh, I just want to say thank you to um, Natalie. Thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, and, uh, just maybe uh, I can say something. Uh, yes, because, uh, of course, as, uh, of course. Yeah, the go people on, who are uh, bah, following your um, webinars and events are, I guess, uh, most of them scientists, I would say that uh, bah, the, the, the startups, but also uh, the researchers, we need scientists to really uh, help in the development mm. of this product. And uh, yeah, I guess yeah. that uh, many scientists could uh, find a job uh, quite in this way, in this, to... uh, in this topic. Yeah. OK, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. That's uh, that's very interesting. That's very nice. And I don't know, it's just uh, actually out of curiosity. Do you know if there is any online survey that uh, we can, uh, you know, fill or just share with our audience? So they can feel to, uh, you know, gather information regarding uh, 
uh, customers uh, at centers of these uh, cultivated meats, you know, like uh, a test that we can do online to gather um, information, a Google survey or whatever, or you don't have anything uh, like that? Uh... A, a survey to like be part, uh, actually the, the, the thing would be to be part of a consumer acceptance survey. I'm not sure to understand. Yeah, the... no, no, no. The fact that something that we can compile, you know, just from our uh, home, ah. uh, like a, a set of questions where we say that we would like to try or it's something that yeah we are interesting or not to see if uh, actually people around uh, the world uh, is you know it's just a test so everybody can do it very quickly and you can start to have an idea about uh, how people is uh, reacting to this you know if they are interesting if they are not it's just to gather some information yeah, yeah I, I don't really know uh, i don't get nothing like i have nothing in mind of uh, yeah something like that okay. but uh, actually uh, the idea will uh, as everything is new uh, everything is uh, just um, starting mm -hmm. uh, it would be interesting to be in the in contact with the people who are interested in the topic and willing to to start new projects uh, yeah mm -hmm. i'm uh, very open to that uh, and uh, also for example we have a, a, a slack uh, for the U european uh, people interested in the topic for them like oh, wow. to, to discuss together and uh, so, okay okay yeah and if the people are interested they can just uh, come uh, to me and uh, see what we could do <laughs> and also i guess also to uh, agriculture solar france probably there they can uh, get a lot of information about this and maybe yeah, yeah That's because good. also my, my idea would be to like create a, a network so especially in a network in europe uh, with people interested willing to be part of it willing to help uh, there are so many things to do uh, that uh, yeah all of the people uh, interested could uh, uh, find a way to to be involved uh, in this new field okay perfect perfect um, so, uh, thank you again, Natalie. It was very interesting. Uh, and again, I would stay here to storm you with other questions, but we have to stop. <laughs> and I hope that wasn't so harsh for you and uh, you were, uh, you, you had fun as, as we had. I hope the audience as well was, uh, was mm. very nice with that. Marion, thank you so much for your uh, initial introduction and uh, your support. And uh, thank you to all the guys that are in the background. Uh, next week, actually, next week, guys, actually, we are coming back on Thursday. But uh, also, Pint of Science Ireland is organizing a Couch of Science, which is going from the uh, Monday 25th to uh, Thursday 28th uh, at uh, 8 uh, p.m. in the evening, uh, Belgium time, which will be uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Irish time. And so you can go there also to have a look. Every, every day they will have a different topic and uh, you can follow them after us. Uh, on Thursday, next Thursday, which we are coming back talking about uh, um, a very interesting topic, which is uh, uh, model animals uh, in science. So something very, uh, topic very, very interesting and which might be actually very interesting to compare with, uh, with what we discussed today. And uh, that's it. Thank you for all the guys in the background. Thank you to the audience. And you can follow us on uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and uh, Instagram. And you can also actually send us some emails if you have any questions. Uh, do Couch of Science, uh, uh, Pint of Science B. And, uh, and that's it. So have a nice evening. Thank you so much. Thank you again, Natalie. And uh, Thank you very much. Go on, bye, team. Mm -hmm. And go outside to enjoy the weather. I don't know what else to say because it's still very, very warm. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.